Japan. YouTube, so we're back. It is the next day after trying to reject uh, this stupid little pit bike's car. It's freezing outside. It's like 25 degrees, no gloves out there riding. But I had to uh, test this thing to uh, see how the rejetting on the car, the new pod filter. The main jet, as you guys know, it's always had that bogging issue, always at the top end it would bog. Not just so much on the low end, a little bit on the low end, but mainly on the top end it would bog kinda, and, and I've having the, the idling issue and everything else for the longest time. So what I did is I changed out the, uh, I tried doing the, the pilot jet the first time last night. I think stock is a 22.5, I put a 20 in, and then that didn't work, so I ended up going back to the 22.5 Pilot Jet and then changing the main jet from a 90 to a 75 in this uh, Makuni 26 millimeter carb. So if you have a similar setup with the 144, 143 or whatever big bore kit with a V2 head. I highly recommend uh, doing that setup as far as uh, tuning on the carb. It seemed, as you guys saw from those beginning uh, riding clips, for the most part, it's running a lot better than it did before, so I'm pretty happy with that. I'm gonna throw the uh, the plastic back on and uh, button this up. So I don't think I'm going to. I talked about taking out the, the 125 over here. I think it's too cold. To be honest, I think this thing's gonna blow up, so I don't really wanna cause myself any more issues than the bike already has, and God forbid I, whatever the cylinder if it blows up, whatever. I don't feel like dealing with it. Maybe, maybe I'll take it out, but I honestly think there's too much snow. There's like two feet of snow on the ground. This thing isn't gonna lug around. It's gonna be pretty lame, I think. If you guys really wanna see me ride this thing in the snow, I don't know, 5,000 likes maybe, six, 7,000 likes, just give this video a thumbs up if you want me to do it. If you guys actually want to see me do it, let me know in the comments. But today's mission is to, thanks to Cameron, along with the parts washer, he sent over some of these uh, Scotch Bright wheels that the center here um, pops out. I'm able to put it in a drill, or if I had like a bench grinder set up, I could do that. But in my case, I don't have a bench grinder, so I'm just going to use the drill over here. Rig some a little contraption. I could buy a little fitting for it to screw on, but I think I can make it myself with some of the parts I have. So I'm thinking about I could possibly get the drill in the vise, have something hold the throttle down in the drill, maybe tape the trigger down so this thing's constantly spinning. And then uh, what I'm gonna do is take some of these parts or some parts that I'm not getting vapor honed or even some parts I'm getting vapor honed to show um, this thing clean up some of the parts and what you can do if you don't have access. Get stuff vapor honed. If you don't have a parts washer, you can use one of these. He has them on his website. If you want to check them out, I'll leave his link down below in the description. But, but like I always say, if you guys are new and this is the first video you're watching, definitely hit the subscribe button down below to see future videos on the pit bike and the 125 build and whatnot. And uh, we'll get into today's video. All right, here's my plan with this little contraption. I'm just going to push it into this. And And now we got my little makeshift kind of, it's a little lopsided, but it's gonna flex anyway. I don't think it really matters. So I tried it on the case saver for like two seconds. As you can see, cleaned it up a little bit, but I did end up putting it in the vise here, sketchily. I think it's gonna work. I just gotta figure out how I'm gonna lock down the trigger. I wish I showed you like the before and after, but just for using that for like two minutes, it definitely cleaned that up. I'm gonna get another part. So here's the kickstart before using the scotch right pad, and this was just in the wash tank. As you can see, after doing this for about five minutes, this Kickstarter cleaned up so, so good. Something I'm gonna uh, have an issue with is this thing is gonna chew through batteries. You can see for yourself, like that honestly brightened and shined this thing right up. I honestly would be happy with this on the bike without getting a vapor hone, but I don't really know how much better that can get. I mean, the key with this is to stay in one direction. I kind of didn't in some parts, because it's kind of tricky to be in one direction on all the like different angles and stuff, but for the most part, I got everything off except a little bit like in the kickstart in these little grooves. It's kind of hard to get inside of there, but 
I'm not gonna complain. Post your comment down below what you think of the first part right here. Next on deck, see how this thing cleans up. Save yourself in the comments for this riggery with this duct tape and whatever. It's working and it's making the parts look clean. That's all that matters. If you can see, it's a little bit pitted on the inside. It's hard to really tell, but it's kind of got that darker color and up here and on the top. Um, it's a little bit different color, but for the most part, shine it up. Okay, so I've actually switched out for a regular corded drill that I had in the garage. But this is when a trusty, uh, nice corded drill comes in handy, and I, I don't gotta worry about batteries dying on me. So this will be at a constant speed now. Don't have to worry about it. This thing at least has to be like 10-ish years old, probably even older. This disc definitely wore down a ton. I had this going for a solid 20 minutes straight. It was just on like full blast. It's probably not too good for the drill, but I got most of the parts done over here as you can see. I spent the most time on the shifter just trying to get off all that grime and grum off the end. I couldn't actually get stuff around the pin or whatever. Um, it's just too much on an angle. The bottom one I can kind of hook on the edge of the on the edge of this pin and get it around, but I still couldn't get in there good enough to get all that grime out. Um, but for the most part, I mean, it got pretty much everything off. If you guys are looking to do this with the scotch bright wheel, I highly, highly recommend using this because as you guys can see from some of these parts, it, um, it definitely shows. Kind of like if you see that, I don't know what to call it, but that the darker spots just from it being old and all the dirt and grime and grease and whatever soaking into the aluminum. But um, yeah, it definitely shined these up a lot, a lot better than what it was before with a uh, minimal effort. Couldn't really get in there with the pack cock as you guys saw. It's too many different angles and edges and things. Maybe if I took the bever cap off and then did that, I could probably do it a little bit better. But this will all just get vapor honed anyway because the vapor honing, as you guys will see in tomorrow's video, it'll clean it up better than this right here. It'll be even shinier, a lot more smooth. You won't really see the, the lines from the, uh, the disc in there. It'll look literally better than new. It'll look better than if it came off the showroom floor, it'll look literally 10 times better than that. So, so if you guys wanna see that, come uh, come check out tomorrow's video. I should have it up by tomorrow. The cases over here, along with the uh, cylinder and stuff, that'll be the biggest transformation, the before and after. Uh, yeah, those things will look spotless, so I'm hyped to see that. If you're looking just to use the, uh, the Scott's Bright Wheel, I think it's good enough. Like the Kickstarter, the thing looks pretty much brand new. It's definitely do it with all the axles. I didn't spend too much time on it, but it can definitely clean them up. Like I'm not gonna bother with these over here or the, the rear axle and whatnot or the carb. I don't even know how you do it on the carb. I don't think you really could. You could do it on the shock with the wheel. It just takes a lot of time. You really gotta take your time with it if you want the best results and go really slow with it. I did on a few parts like the uh, the brake here and the linkages and stuff like that. Like I said, if you spend your time on it, it definitely can clean it up. I might try to touch this up a little bit more. Really not too bad and I'm really surprised on how well that thing works. And using the drill and have this rigged all together. I know a lot of you are gonna laugh at me, but I mean, it's better than going out and buying a bench grinder for just this reason when I can just use the drill. And as you saw, I mean, it worked pretty good just having it rigged together like that, plugged into the wall, and uh, the results from it really show. And I think it makes up for the sketchiness of, of that whole rig over there. Like I said, if you wanna buy these wheels, I'll leave the link down below in the description. Overall, if you wanna clean up your bike, highly recommend it. I, might, I actually wanna take off some parts on the pit bike and uh, put it on there, like take a shifter off, shine that up. But this whole side case here, because it got uh, sandblasted and then all I did was clear coat, um, I think I did like two layers of clear coat. It kind of got into the aluminum and it won't come out even on a good power wash because it's kind of, it's in the aluminum now. But I'm not too concerned and just a pit bike at the end of the day.
the frame stripped down enough for uh, sandblasting and uh, powder coat for the most. So I'm going to leave some of this on so he can vapor hone these little parts. I don't feel like taking it off. All right, so let me know down in the comments what you think of the results from uh, using the scotch right pad. I think they turned out way better than before, obviously, I mean, from taking it off. But very happy with the results. Let me know what you think. Any new part recommendations? I'm not even going to use the shifter. Um, th some of this has a little bit. You can see some of the, the edging if because I didn't really do it all straight. But for the most part, it's really clean. Really happy with them. Happy that I uh, got the pit bike running good now. Probably the best it's ever um, ran, to be honest. So I don't really have to dial in the carb anymore. I might have to once it gets warmer. But thank you to everybody that commented on yesterday's video, um, giving me some tips and stuff on how to reject that and just fix it and make it run better. And I'm going to take all these parts, pretty much almost every part I took off, put it in the box over there, get it all ready for vapor honing tonight. So stay on the lookout for uh, tomorrow's video for the vapor honing. I don't know if it's not really a how-to, but just like the before and after. A lot of you guys like to see that. And I'm also very curious to see the process. Um, I'm gonna bring the uh, swing arm to get that shining up. I don't think this is like a part five. I was gonna title it like part 4.8 or something like that, but I mean, it was kind of revolving around the pit bike and cleaning some of the parts. I'm not sure what I'm gonna title it, but I don't think this is like a full dedicated part. I think the vapor honing is uh, gonna be part five. Definitely let me know some different tips and tricks in the comments for uh, putting the bike back together. For that, if you guys enjoyed it, definitely hit the subscribe button down below. Give this video a thumbs up. Go smash the thumbs up button. If you guys want to see the vapor honing before it comes out in the video, follow at Project KX125. That's where I'm posting all the pictures um, before I release the video. So definitely give me a follow at Project KX125. And uh, yeah, off of that, I'll see you guys tomorrow in the uh, vapor honing video.